All right, man, torture talk, torture talk, torture talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page, hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. The Moment Maker, The Moment Maker. This is the 12 o'clock show. And today's show is about Kendrick Lamar being the moment maker. Drake said something about Kendrick years ago, and he said it was just a moment. And everybody was like, okay, it was just a moment. But what Drake don't understand is moments is what makes history. And Kendrick is a moment maker. We're going to watch this video talking about that. Be back to discuss. Got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, welcome. Welcome. Let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, single, sexy ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas. Y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content, and that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links will be on the screen. Q card, cash app is in the description. You know what it is. I'm the hidden gem. It went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000. Trying to make by a million by Monday morning. I wake up from my sleep and I see I'm a million subscribers in. And I'm going to be like, yes. Now I could take them down. And uh, yeah, man, let me know where you're from. So look, we're going to get right into it. And uh, yeah, this is the 12 o'clock show. <laughs> so let's get it. All right, so let's go. Yo, top five, two, nine, two, nine. Notice I said we, it's not just me. I'm what the culture feeling. Have you ever thought that OVO is working for me? Beat your ass and hide the Bible if God watching. No round tools. Let's get it. I saw this video by Pio's Place where he goes in depth into Kendrick Lamar creating moments, a narrative spun by Drake years and years ago, back at the very beginning of their high profile beef that culminated in some of the most culturally defining moments in hip hop of the current decade. He's giving people like moments, you know, like that, that verse was a, a moment to talk about. Um, I'm going to tell you, this. I'm not going to say I don't like Elliot Wilson. I think he's cool. You know what I'm saying? But. He's one of those dudes, man, to me, it's like he voluntarily want to be a, a, a knob slobber. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, sometimes I feel like that about him. It's like, oh, like, even though Drake disrespect him, I feel like he still feels like Drake is one of the best. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. He's still my top. Like, come on, bro. Are you listening to it now at this point in time? Oh, okay. That's what's inspired me to make this video. You see, I've been a Kendrick Lamar fan since I started listening to rap music as far back as the fourth grade when I was introduced to it by my older brother. And Drake, while I don't agree with him on really anything at all, well, I agree with him on this. Kendrick Lamar does create moments, and he creates them constantly. Time to strike a chord, and it's probably a minor. Now, I'm not going to go into the... Yeah, that was crazy. I'm going to tell you, that was crazy. Because, see, he flipped that day free joint and just flipped it on him. That was a crazy rebuttal. That may be one of the greatest bars ever penned to paper. Trying to strike a chord and it's probably A minor. What? Whew origin story of Kendrick like I normally would. This isn't the opening credits of a Spider-Verse movie. No, this video is about Kendrick's next moment, how we got here, and what it means to the genre. Consider subscribing. It's free, and the bigger that number gets, the better person it makes me because that's how it works. Like I said, Drake is the one who spun the narrative of Kendrick creating moments, but he spun it in a way that doesn't hold true. He used it as a way to knock Kendrick down, but the truth is, Kendrick's moments last, and now they'll last for history. How did we get here though? It all started back in 2013 when Big Sean released his song, Control. The song featured Jay Electronica and none other than Kendrick Lamar. The song seemed as if it was a typical collaboration between some of the upcoming names of the industry. Until minute three, second 20, 
when Kendrick starts to rap then drops a bomb on the industry. This bomb not only stirred the pot leading to a decade long beef but it was also the first of Kendrick's many moments. Following this Drake and Kendrick entered into what can only be described as a cold war. Both artists would diss each other over the years while making it clear that the only people who would understand the disses the fuck, I don't even like you. were each other. After Kendrick released his album Damn in 2017, he stuck around for a little bit to do the normal album release stuff. You know, collect rewards, win a Pulitzer Prize, tour around the world, the typical everyday musician things. And then he disappeared completely, except for the Black Panther soundtrack, which won him another Grammy because it's incredible. But outside of that, he was all but retired. Also, he's the- Yeah. I remember those days when Kendrick disappeared and we was all wondering when he was coming back. Like, yo, what's up, man? It's been a long time, man. It's been a long time. And his name was still relevant. Amazing. It's so amazing how Kendrick Lamar just does things and these moments are created when he does things. And it that kind of goes off, off of why he doesn't put out so much material. Because whenever he comes, he creates moments. And we're going to go through the moments at the end. Let's go. The only hip-hop artist to ever win a Pulitzer Prize. While never explicitly coming out and saying he was retired, he was pretty much gone for almost five years with next to nothing expected to release. And fans had completely come to terms with the fact that we weren't getting another album from him. But then he responded to a tweet claiming he was retired with nothing but a link. We still didn't fully know what was going on at the time, but suddenly a door opened. A door leading fans across the world to nothing other than hope. And then... Kendrick returned to put the industry on notice. I'm smoking on your what's the name tonight. I am the Omega. PG Lane, Rolly Gang, SIE. Don't you address me unless it's with four letters. 2021 ain't taking no prisoner. Baby Keem, Kendrick Lamar's cousin. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga came back and said, I am the Omega. <laughs> Don't address me unless it's with four letters, nigga. <laughs> what? As GOAT, nigga. <laughs> oh my God. Yo. And who had been steadily growing a strong fan base over the years of Kenny's absence drops his song Family Ties featuring Kendrick Lamar. And oh boy, you just had to be there for it because whenever those horns start to play and this song comes on, everybody around you would stop what they were doing and sing every single word. Or 817 words if you're white like me. This was only the beginning of his return, as he then released his fifth studio album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Mr. Morale was an incredible I actually have a piece coming up about Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. It's going to be a long, long video. So be on the lookout for that. I'm just going to, um, I'm, I'm working on it now and I'm going to drop it. It's going to be about maybe two and a half hours, almost three hours long. Because I'm going to go through every song with all the, what everything means, the psychological effects it had on people and how he went through it in his life. I'm going from the first song all the way to the last song. Every even the skits, you know what I'm saying? So I'm I'm breaking them down. Now I'm not gonna probably be able to play the music, but I'm gonna play a piece of it so you know it's a song. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep it going. Work and it was very clearly not meant to be an album whose sole focus was radio play. I mean, none of Kendrick's albums have ever been solely geared for radio play, but this one was different. The subject matter within the covers is dark and real and goes into trauma, abuse, just everything that will make you uncomfortable to talk about, but that was also the point. We can't avoid these topics altogether because avoidance is compliance. And there are people out there who need to hear that they are not alone in their individual battles. They don't have to suffer in silence. This subject matter didn't stop people from listening to it either, as it was still an incredible success, and it is very easily going to be an album listened to for generations. It sold 295,000 units in the first week, and the tour that followed it set records. Following the release of Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, then following the tour, it seemed like Kendrick was back, but we weren't quite sure what was coming next. In fact, I don't think anybody truly expected what was about to unfold. Motherfucker, big three, nigga, it's just big me, nigga. That's another moment. Damn, Drake. You talking about he just create moments. 
I had an argument with one of my friends, and he said that Drake just he just good at making. He said Kendrick is just good at making moments, and I was like, that's all he need. No, no, no. That's not. That's not. That's not all he need. I'm like, bro, because in history, I mean, who, who gonna look back and say Kendrick? I'm like, bro, he only got five albums, and he's he's lapped most of the artists ever in in hip hop history, bro. Off of five albums. Can't say nothing to him, bro. You can't. The heavily anticipated it. album, We Don't Trust You, from Future and Metro Boomin finally happened. And along with this album came a track list full of hidden features. When you reach track six, titled Like That, you come across an amazing song through and through. It's great. But then you hear Kendrick's all too familiar voice come on the song, and his verse is a nuke on the industry, specifically a nuke on Drake and J. Cole, who not that long ago had released a collaboration called First Person Shooter, in which they dubbed the big three as being Drake, J. Cole, and Kendrick Lamar. And well, Kendrick didn't really like that. The Cold War was over. Now it's time for a grudge match between the giants of the industry. Now, we all know the story of the beef, but this is where Kendrick gave us even more moments. Mainly, what he dropped in the songs, but also his strategy to win this battle. Drake released push-ups and Taylor made freestyle, showing Kendrick that he wanted the smoke, but even he wasn't ready for what was about to follow. After a couple weeks of antagonization towards Kendrick, <laughs> we were given Euphoria, a song that took the world by storm. While it was still really just a warning shot, but also a setup for what was about to come. Euphoria, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You gotta blow the horns for Euphoria, man. Oof. Oh, my God, man. Them superpowers get neutralized. Only could watch in silence. The famous act that we once knew looked as paranoid and now spiraling. You move us just like a degenerate. Every antic is feeling distasteful. Why calculate? We said, why calculate? You're not calculated. I could even predict your angles. Fabricating stories on a family front because you heard Mr. Morale. He said this in this song before he even did all that. You're not a rap artist. You're a scam artist. You're not a rap artist. You're a scam artist. With the hopes of being accepted. Tommy Hill could Tommy Hill figure stood out, but Fubu never been in your collection. I make music that electrify him. You make music that pacify him. I could double down that line, but I'll spare you this time. It's random acts of kindness. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. No, you a master manipulator and a habitual liar too. But don't tell no lies about me, and I won't tell no truths about you. That's another warning right there. Oh my God, bro, let's go. Um, a few days later, he released his own tailor-made freestyle, but his was called 616 in LA, where he's playing mind games with Drake, telling Drake that everyone around him is compromised, including his biggest eater. Kendrick gave us another moment after this. What top five you smoking on, Kendrick? Cause my top five is Drake, 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 Drake. Drake responds with Family Matters, which was supposed to be his win condition, but Kendrick, only a few minutes after Drake's release, released his own family-related song called Meet the Grams, in which he exposes Drake on every level, attacking him and his family and dropping bombs that, while they- So, here's why this song is great. And I don't want to hear nobody saying anything about Drake, about him talking about Drake's son. He literally said that Drake's son's a king. And he literally said that, play this when you're 18. Just carry yourself as a king and play this when you're 18. If you want to know about your dad, play this. That's so scary because what happens when Adonis gets older and he starts to, uh, he gets older and he starts to realize that his dad is who his dad was. And he looks back and he listens to that song. Oh, my God. 
Let's keep it going. May or may not be true, took all the heat out of Drake's release and completely brick walled his momentum. A fucking dead? He wasn't done yet either because only a day later, Kendrick <laughs> dropped Not Like Us, which has gone on to become one of hip hop's biggest songs ever, breaking numerous records held by Drake, becoming an anthem for months and proving that yes, he is what the culture's feeling. Now that the beef was decisively won by Kendrick, it was time for him to give us another moment to write in the history books. Kendrick put together a show at the Kia Forum called The Pop Out, and excitement quickly grew as everyone was writing the highs of the beef still and wondered what was in store. And what happened next? Well, I don't think we'll ever see anything like that ever again. The Pop Out was insane, and it was a total celebration of the West Coast, bringing out fan favorites from West Coast hip hop history, while also giving spotlight to some lesser known artists. Once Kendrick came out, it was the cherry on top, and while it was a victory lap for him, ending the show by playing Not Like Us five times in a row, he gave us the true moment for history. He brought out the Pyru Bloods and Crips from the LA area, two rival gangs who had been feuding relentlessly for years and years and years, uniting everyone on stage, showing everyone the ones who fell victim to the endless violence growing up, the ones who are dealing with it in the current day, and the young kids that there's good that can come from everything. This was what everything had led to, unification of a divided culture. But you can see it in the title and thumbnail that this isn't where the video ends. That's because about three weeks ago, Kendrick announced a performance like nothing we've ever seen. Kendrick Lamar is headlining the Super Bowl halftime show. Meet me in New Orleans. And yes, we have already seen Kendrick perform at the Super Bowl alongside Dre, Snoop, M, 50 Cent, and Mary J. Blige, but this is where the history is being made. No rapper has ever headlined the Super Bowl as a solo act. There has been some It's another moment. Drama from this, so yes, Kendrick is already writing history again, but who knows if the drama and criticism from this announcement will lead to him shocking everyone once again. I'm talking about the drama from people being mad that Lil Wayne isn't performing since the Super Bowl is in New Orleans. It broke me. But who knows what can happen from here on out. Kendrick is showing us that he always has something to come next. This halftime show announcement is a big step forward for the genre as a whole. While being the most popular genre for years now, it was still heavily criticized by the mainstream media because of the vulgarity of some of the music released. But that's the beauty of hip hop. No other medium of music is as real and forthcoming about the struggles of an entire demographic as this one is. As for now, what's next is the Super Bowl, another chapter in the history books of hip hop that's had Kendrick writing it for a while now. Pretty good video, man. Make sure y'all go subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Mike's room. Yeah, man. So the moments. So Kendrick comes with. We can we can basically say, we can start with uh, start with let's just start with uh, control. All right, let's, you know what? Controversy. Eminem, one of the biggest controversial rappers ever he created moments now his moments were more controversial you know what i'm saying in the way where people remember him and he did controversial things because eminem was he was let's just say eminem was a, he went to war with the industry you know what i'm saying because he wasn't he wasn't industry the people might say that about eminem but if you listen to his music he goes against the grain of what it is. He raps about whatever he wants to rap about. And some people say, well, it's because he's white and he could do that. Well, not necessarily true because there's some white, white rappers who can't do what Eminem do. But either way, he went against the grain. So his, his moments were more controversial. Kendrick moments are much more than controversial. They're more like saving the culture type of uh, uh, moments. And he, and he puts himself in that position. So, for example, him, him with control. Let's just say control was the first moment. You know what I'm saying? Then we will go to, uh, let's just, we'll go to Good Kid, Mad City was the second moment. Which, even though it was an album, but let's just say it was a moment. You know what I'm saying? From swimming pools, you never heard nobody rap like that. I mean, he doesn't rap like, um, nobody rap like that. Then we go to the next moment would very be probably be uh the BET Cypher. Where he called out Drake. I think Good Kid Mad City came out after that. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Either way, that's another moment. Then we move on from there. We go to uh King Kunta. You know what I'm saying? It's another moment. 
When you said a rapper with a ghost rider, what the fuck happened? Oh, no. I swear I wouldn't tell. Most of y'all sharing bars like got a bottom bunk on the two-man cell. You know what I'm saying? Like, something's in the water. And if I got a brown nose from the dog, I'm going to be a bum than a motherfucking baller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Classic, classic, classic. You know what I'm saying? So, Pimp a Butterfly, another moment. The, the best rap album ever created. Let's just be clear. That's the greatest rap album ever created. There's nothing better than that. But that's another moment that was created. You know what I'm saying? He had the world talking. So it's not just it's not just Kendrick Lamar's creating moments or just one moment with this person or a beef or whatever. No, whenever he does something, it's a moment. Damn. Another moment. You know what I'm saying? Then we go to, we could go all the way to, we can go to uh, Family Tides. Another moment. Anytime Kendrick Lamar does something, it's a moment. So when Drake said that, I think he thought that that was actually Kendrick's weakness by him saying that. It's really not. That's Kendrick's strength. It's him creating moments. And I believe the reason why it's so effective is because he's, he's so mysterious. See, before he was, you had access to him. He was always all over everything. Now, totally off the grid. So when he does something, everybody flocks to it because it's codes in everything that he does. This is the reason why he's where he's at. So that's what I'm saying. Even with him just dropping something like a Super Bowl ad, that's a moment. Anything Kendrick Lamar does from here on out is always going to be a moment because he has created this aura around him that everything is a moment. Everything. Any, everything you could think of, it's a moment. And uh, yeah, so of course you get to like that moment. Then you get to euphoria moment. You already know, 616. Meet the grams. And not like us. Moments. And I'm sure there's much more than that. What are you, Super Bowl moment? Polar Surprise winning moment, 11 Grammys in one night moment. Can't defeat it. So, but yeah, man, that was a pretty good video. Make sure y'all go subscribe to him, man. I'm out of here, man. See y'all tonight. Six o'clock show coming up. All right, man. Peace, bye. <laughs>